Well, I just finished watching SmackDown for January 1st, 27th, 2012. And they start the show off with a recap of Big Show running into AJ again. Big Show comes down to the ring and says he's sorry. He's going to get right to the point. He's going to apologize to the fans. He's out here to ask for forgiveness, even though he says, I'm having a hard time forgiving myself right now. When I was a kid, I was always really big and didn't know my own strength. And would accidentally hurt all the other kids. And it wasn't until I found WWE that I felt like I really had a home. Um, he says that I apologized to AJ. She immediately forgave me. But after this whole AJ thing and this accident, I, I don't know where my heart is right now. And I don't know... If I'm gonna where my career's gonna go after this Sunday, he says this may just be it for me. After Sunday, I don't know what I'm gonna do because I, I'm having a hard time forgiving myself. All of a sudden, Daniel Bryan's music hits. He comes out and says, "You know, AJ never really forgave you. She was heavily medicated, and she didn't know what she was saying. She doesn't even remember you being there, but I remember everything." And WWE is a place for athletes, not genetic freaks. <laughs> and he says, before you mention Andre the Giant, you are no Andre. It's basically what he tells Big Show. And he says that if you were really sorry, you would just retire. So that this doesn't happen again because you're too big and dangerous and you're just going to hurt somebody else. And you just need to retire and climb back up whatever beanstalk you fell down from. And then he slaps him. He, he basically just tells him he needs to leave and get out. He slaps him in the face again. Big Show charges him into the corner and he's choking him. And he says, who do you think you are? It was an accident, you arrogant little ass. <laughs> and then he throws Daniel Bryan to the ground and Mark Henry's music hits. And Henry has some good stuff here. He comes down to the ring and he says, you know, I don't care about Big Show's hurt feelings. I don't care about Daniel Bryan's Napoleon complex. And I damn sure don't care about a 95-pound woman in a training bra. And he's he says, you know, you guys know what I'm capable of. I don't have to sweet talk you. <laughs> this was just really good stuff here. I really like Mark Henry, and the crowd was actually behind him here too, so I think he definitely will be turning babyface. But He tells Daniel Bryan to stand up to him and talk to him like a man, and after what he did last week at that lumberjack match, he says, I should just tear your skin off, <laughs> just based on general principle. So they're, he's acting like he's about to attack Daniel Bryan and just beat him up something vicious. When all of a sudden, Teddy Long's music hits. And Teddy Long says, you know, last week, or uh, two weeks ago, Daniel Bryan had to wrestle the big show. And then last week, he had to wrestle Mark Henry. So it's only fair that tonight, Mark Henry should wrestle the big show. Daniel Bryan's really happy about it. He's smiling, and Mark Henry and big show just stare at each other and that's it. That's your main event for tonight's SmackDown. All right, so first match starts, and it's Cody Rhodes versus Justin Gabriel. This was a pretty good match. I think Justin Gabriel is awesome. He just needs that charisma factor where he can talk and cut some promos, which would help him get over with the crowd. If he got the crowd behind him, he would be very good because this was a good match, good high-flying um, he lost. Cody Rhodes beat him with the crossroads, but he still put on a pretty good show here. So they go backstage, and Santino was talking with Teddy Long. <laughs> and he says he has an idea for an extreme loser leaves town match where the loser is forced to join a crew of monkeys and fly a ship into outer space and leave the planet altogether. And Teddy just looks at him like he's crazy. And Yoshi Tatsu comes up, or as Santino calls him, Toshi Yatsu. <laughs> and they're they're start they're talking about how they have a tag team, and they can't decide on the name. 
uh, Santino wants Santoshi, Yoshi wants Yoshi Tino or something. And they're just kind of arguing until Drew McIntyre comes up. Drew says, you know, I'm in a slump, Teddy. But even Babe Ruth got struck out five times in one game. And Teddy says, yeah, but the difference is, more often than not, he knocked it out of the park. Which is what I need you to do next because you're up against Sheamus. So Drew's like, all right, Teddy, I, I got this, I got it. So the next, next match starts and it's Sheamus versus Drew McIntyre. Um, this was pretty good. Uh, Sheamus wins with the Brogue kick, but, I mean, I know you didn't think McIntyre was going to win this. But the good part about this, because I do like Drew McIntyre, I think he's awesome. The good part about this is Drew got in a lot of offense. And Sheamus is really hot right now, especially on SmackDown. And for him to at least be able to hold his own and get in that many moves makes Drew look like he could be a threat eventually. And I heard he even got some baby face pops. So maybe people are starting to feel sorry for him, and this could actually get the crowd to care about him. Because even when he was a heel and was wrestling on SmackDown and not losing, the crowd just didn't care. No heat, no booze, just indifference. Like, he didn't even matter. So, this was pretty good. Um, He didn't look like a jobber. He looked like he put up a good fight and just... Sheamus got the better of him, but like I said, Sheamus is probably, besides Orton, the biggest babyface on SmackDown right now, at least for the Pops. So, backstage, um, oh wait, excuse me, um, the next match starts and it's Santino and Yoshitatsu versus Epico and Primo with Rosa Mendez. So they have a tag match and Santino and Yoshi come to the ring and Santino does his speed walk around the ring, and Yoshi's following him, speed walking. This was this was good, and it was short, which is how Santino matches should be. Um, most of the wrestling was done by Yoshi. Santino did uh, some comedy spots in the beginning, um, kind of spinning on top of Epico or Primo. I'm not sure which one it was. I think it was Primo. But Santino really just saved his spots for the end. He gets tagged in. Um, Epico clotheslines Yoshi out of... Or, uh, okay, Primo clotheslines Yoshi out of the ring. Santino hits him with the Cobra. And then he gets the backstabber by Epico. So Epico and Primo win. Santino hit all his comedy spots. He hit the Cobra. He hit his headbutt dive. He did the swing the guy into the ropes and then do the splits. So, I mean, it was short, but it was pretty good. It was entertaining. The only reason Yoshi is on TV, and this is nothing against Yoshitatsu, is they're probably going to put him in the Royal Rumble, and they just want people to at least have seen him once on TV. Even the commentators made a joke about it. Um, I think it was Josh Matthews who says maybe this is what Yoshi needs is to uh, be t- teamed with a guy like Santino. And Cole says maybe what he needs is to be in a match. <laughs> that was pretty good. And they acknowledge that, you know, you never see this guy. So backstage, Brian's, Daniel Bryan's going up to Mark Henry. And he says, you know, I respect you. And I think you and me should have a match. However, I don't think the Big Show deserves to be in the triple threat match this Sunday. And I think you need to get rid of him. He's hurt you. He's hurt other people. And someone needs to stop the Big Show before he does any more damage. And you need to go out there tonight and hurt him badly. You are the only one that can teach the Big Show a lesson. So, Mark Henry's kind of listening to what he's saying. He's not attacking him or anything. And we go to the next match, which is Wade Barrett versus Randy Orton. I don't know what happened here. Earlier in the show, when Teddy Long booked uh, Henry versus Big Show, he said we already have one main event tonight, Wade Barrett versus Orton. So this match was scheduled But it doesn't really happen. Basically what happens is Wade Barrett comes out 
and he's on the mic. And he says, you know, there's a lot of pageantry set up here tonight for Randy Orton's return. The doctors say he's okay to return physically, but spiritually he's broken. He shows the clip of him being thrown down the stairs. And Wade says, he looks like he's fallen and he couldn't get up. He says the only voices in his head now are those telling him that Wade Barrett is a vicious competitor. So Orton's music hits and it shows him walking to the ring backstage like he's Goldberg. He walks to the he's walking to the ring. Him and Wade Barrett start brawling on the outside. They're just punching each other and like five referees come out. The bell isn't rung even though the guys are in the ring like the match has started. And just all of a sudden there's five referees here to break them up. I don't understand why like just let them have the match. They're just punching each other. This is what would happen in the match anyway. So the referees can't keep these guys apart. So Teddy Long sends in the job squad of Kurt Hawkins, uh, Trent Beretta, and uh, Tyler Rex. So these guys come out, and they're trying to hold them off, but they can't get it done either. They eventually brawl back into the ring. Um... The Usos come out to help keep these two guys apart. They start holding Orton back, and Wade Barrett escapes. So, Wade Barrett escapes. Randy Orton's in the ring with the job squad, and he starts giving them RKO's. He RKO's one of them. I think it was Kurt Hawkins. The other guy says, what are you doing? He RKO's him. The other guys just stand there and watch this and basically line up to get RKO'd. It just looked ridiculous. Um, He RKO's five guys, which is four too many, if you ask me. But anyways, he RKO's all five of the jobbers, and that's it. I don't know why he didn't just have the match, but... So they cut backstage, and Daniel Bryan's talking to Caitlin. Caitlin says, you know, I'm AJ's best friend, even though... There was a house show back when Natalia and Beth Phoenix were doing their... uh, I can't even remember what they were calling those girls, but... When Natalia and Beth Phoenix were doing their gimmick, and it was the two of them as a tag team, and they were beating up all the girls. Well, Caitlyn was actually supposed to join that and be the third member. And at a house show, or not... I don't even think it was a house show. It was a SmackDown taping. She did turn on AJ and join them. However, they cut the segment from TV, and now they act like it never happened. But anyways, that's besides the point. Caitlin's talking about how she's, you know, AJ's best friend. Daniel Bryan asked her for a favor. Go tell Big Show that Henry is going to try and injure him tonight to keep him out of the triple threat match. And Caitlin says, is this favor really for AJ, or is this for you? And he says, it's for both of us. You know how AJ feels about me. And she's like, okay, I'll do it, but I need a favor from you. Tell me how you really feel about AJ. And Daniel Bryan says, I like to keep myself private, you know, but the sooner you tell Big Show, the better. So, that was that was pretty good. The next match is Hunico with Camacho versus DiBiase. Now, DiBiase has a legit wrist injury. He, I think, fractured his wrist or and tore some cartilage in there or something. So, he really is hurt. Um, apparently, he can work with the injury, though, is what he's saying, but... Basically, they have a decent match. Uh, Hunico just stomps his wrist the entire time. Um, I mean, I know they're shooting an injury angle, so that's why I say it was decent. Uh, I know what they're trying to do here. They're trying to give Ted some time to recover, I'm guessing. Um, But Hunico just beats up his wrist, and then he beats him with kind of a spinning Samoan drop type move. After the match, uh, Hunico and Camacho just work on the wrist. They beat DiBiase down, and then they put his wrist on the stairs, and Hunico stomps it. So they set up a legit injury angle because he had, or they set up an injury angle because he has a legit injury. Uh, backstage, o- Oksana and Teddy. Oh my God! I rem- okay, this was ridiculous. Backstage, Oksana and Teddy are talking. Natalia comes up and says she wants a match with Tamina because she's been attacking her, and they've been kind of feuding the past couple weeks on SmackDown. And Teddy says, well, I can see you really want a match, so I'm going to give you a match against Oksana. And Natalia says, that's great. I can't wait to make you cry 
and then you hear this kind of a fart noise, but it's not really a fart noise. I had to watch this a couple times. I watched it like three times to find out what was going on here, so I did not get this wrong. And apparently, Natalia slipped and farted. And Oksana and Teddy Long hold their noses, and they walk off. And then Santino comes in the back and acts like he's hit with an invisible, you know, fist and starts coughing. And he's saying, oh, oh, it's in my mouth. Oh. And he's coughing, and then that's it. I have no idea who wrote this, why they thought this was funny, why they're using stuff like this to make Natalia look stupid and bury her. But man, she must have pissed somebody off backstage because every week it gets worse for this poor girl. So, the next match is Brodus Clay versus Alex Riley. Riley's waiting for him in the ring. Brodus comes out, does his entrance. Riley's dancing along to the music. He looks like an idiot. Um, the match starts. Riley's dancing in front of Brodus. Brodus starts shaking his legs at him. And then he hits him with a T-bone suplex, I believe. Splashes him in the corner. Hits the crossbody. Beats him. Three moves. Back to back. Squash match. The entrance lasted longer. The ending. Ent- the uh, celebration Brodus Clay does at the end with the girls dancing and himself lasted longer than the match. Ridiculous. Another week goes by. Brodus Clay beats a nobody. Uh, they really need to have him wrestle someone serious because this is this is not going to end well if they don't. If he keeps squashing jobbers every week. I mean, you can only see that entrance so many times. It's going to start to wear thin here pretty soon. But Backstage, it shows Caitlin talking to the big show, but we can't hear what she's saying. So I don't know why they didn't tell. You could There was no audio, so we couldn't hear... If she was telling Big Show all Daniel Bryan's making me do this or something, it just just shows the clip. Then they they actually show the in, they show almost the entire match from Raw of Kane versus Zack Ryder. Like I thought they'd do some highlights and maybe play up the angle he broke his back, but no, they show almost the entire match. This was ridiculous. All right, so the next match is Natalia versus Oksana. Natalia's in the ring. Oksana comes out. Uh, Natalia runs to the ropes and starts screaming. I guess she's telling Tamina to come out. Oksana hits a roll-up, pins her one, two, three. Nothing else happened. After that, Natalia just beats her up, puts her in the sharpshooter. A very, very awkward-looking sharpshooter. I've, I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. And I know you have the sharpshooters that look good. You have the sharpshooter where the guy's barely got the guy's legs back. He's not even close to him. He's not even close to sitting on him. But her legs were like straight up in the air like she was diagonal. This was very strange looking. But regardless, Oksana was tapping out. Tamina comes down for the save. Hits Natalia with a Samoan drop. Hits her with a Superfly splash. And then she helps Tamina up and that's it. So, the main event is Big Show versus Mark Henry. This was pretty strange. Uh, I don't know because I I watched this on, um, I watched it on YouTube because I guess it airs earlier in Britain or Australia or somewhere and it's put online. So I went ahead and watched it on the, uh, on the internet so I could get the review up as quickly as possible. And I don't know if they cut certain stuff out than what they would show on American TV later tonight because this technically doesn't air until 8. But uh, this was bizarre. Daniel Bryan comes out. He's sitting outside watching the match. And their big show is attacking Mark Henry. That It cuts to commercial. And then when it comes back... The match is over. Like, I don't think I've ever seen that before. I'm going to watch the show again tonight with my friends, just for fun. But, uh, yeah, what I saw on, you know, today, they, the match was over during commercial break. Big Show standing in the ring, and apparently Mark Henry got knocked out, tried to get back in, got punched in the face, and then he couldn't recover, 
and he got counted out. So Mark Henry lost by, you know, no time. He got the 10 count, and he couldn't get in. So that was that was pretty strange. Basically, when it came back from commercial, all I see is Daniel Bryan jumping in the ring. So apparently Mark Henry lost by a count out. Um, Daniel Bryan jumps in the ring and he starts attacking Big Show with a chair. Big Show eventually gets to the chair and he starts chasing Daniel Bryan around the ring. Daniel Bryan throws the title at Big Show and while he's distracted, he drop kicks him in the knee, grabs the chair, starts beating on the Big Show with the chair. He hits him a ton of times with this. Uh, they both get back in the ring. He puts him in the LaBelle lock and Big Show is looks like he's about to tap, but instead of tapping, he powers out of the bell lock, choke slams Daniel Bryan, and then he's about to go for the big punch, the WMD, but Daniel Bryan escapes. So that was your SmackDown for this week. It was it was decent. It had some okay stuff. I I didn't like the Brodus Clay squash because it's just needless. If he wrestled a real guy who's not a jobber, who stood a chance, and they had a match, that would be one thing. But the squashing, this is, I believe, the sixth time he's just squashed someone. It's getting old fast. So I didn't really like that. I like the promos with between Daniel Bryan, Big Show, Mark Henry, uh, them, him getting Caitlyn involved, um... I thought that was good. Cody Rhodes versus Justin Gabriel was good. Sheamus and McIntyre. Uh, it was a pretty good show. But then they just had some really goofy stuff. The most notable thing being Natalia. That was just bizarre. But anyways, I hope you guys like this video. Please subscribe because it helps me out a lot. Um, and I will be back probably later this afternoon to do a Royal Rumble prediction show. Um, I'm going to look at the card and, you know, write down what I think is going to happen. So I hope you guys come back to listen to that show and subscribe to my channel and listen to all my other videos. And thanks for listening. Bye.